success story, depending on your point of view, but perhaps this program will help you to more accurately evaluate success. Stay tuned to The Living Word as we look in on the office of Matt Heron, an executive of Dornay Fashions. Yeah, we got that silk shantung this morning, Phil. Thanks for hurrying it up. No, no, we're making up some special numbers. Sure, sure. For lunch? All right, Wednesday will be fine. <laughs> well, that's the fashion business. Okay. Thanks again, Phil. Sure thing. Bye. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Matt. Susie said you wanted to see me. Right. Debbie, we're in a bit of a bind. I thought we might talk about it. Don't tell me our temperamental designers acting up again. <laughs> that we're used to. No, what I'm referring to is Maxine Miller. She's leaving us. I knew she'd been offered a fashion editor's job. She told me herself. Yeah, well, she decided to accept it. And we're losing a top-flight head buyer. And we need someone to take her place. But isn't Lily Foss in line for the job? She's worked closely with Maxine. Maybe so. But I have someone else in mind. Oh, who? You, Debbie. Me? Oh, now, Matt, wait just a minute. Wouldn't you like the job? Of course I'd like the job. I'd give my right arm for the job. I'm ambitious, you know that. Exactly. You'd make a good buyer. You've got the looks, you've got the eye, you know the answers, and you know how to bargain, right? You seem to know, Matt. It's made for you, Debbie. New York, San Francisco... Not to mention London and Paris in due season. I know the fringe benefits. You don't have to twist my arm. But why me? I always figured you'd go places in this company. What do you say? How can I refuse? I want to go places. Good. Then it's settled. But, uh, Lily Foss is going to be awful, man. Lily likes it or loves it? Getting ruthless, aren't we, Matt? Just practical, that's all. I see. Practical. Well, I'd better get back to the mill. Oh, there is just one other little thing. I thought there might be. Yeah. Well, the fact is, uh, Reed Gorman's in town from Montreal. You know Reed. I know him to smile at. I know he has influence and money. Yeah. Well, that's just the point. Gorman's proposing to turn a big thing our way. It could double our business. He's staying in town over the weekend, and we'll have his decision on Monday morning. So? Well, uh, Gorman thinks that you... Uh, well, he, he thinks that you're a very special type gal. Well, bully for Mr. Gorman. I mean it, Debbie. Matt, you are as subtle as a bulldozer. Reed Gorman's going to be in town for the weekend, and you'd like me to entertain him, keep him happy, right? Well, uh, what I mean is, uh, well... And whatever Mr. Gorman's idea of entertainment might be, I fall in line. Right again? Debbie, honey. This deal with Gorman is terribly important to all of us. It's okay, Matt. I just want to keep the record straight, that's all. And I do want that job, don't I? Well, it's not as if he was married, even. Reed's a very nice guy. Of course. And I'm a big girl. I know my way around. I know the answers. I'd say so. One thing I know, Matt, I'm not the only person in this room who knows how to bargain. Now, Debbie. 
It's okay. If Mr. Gorman wishes, he can call me at my apartment this evening. Good girl. If you can't be good, be smart. Matt, there are times when I'm not sure I like you. See you later. You ask me what I think? I think you're out of your mind. Look, Judy, honey. Reed Gorman is a very attractive man. And he's single. That's not the point, and you know it. You talk about spending a weekend with him as if it were something like changing a book at the library. Oh, come now, sweetie. I'm not quite that casual. The thing is, what have I got to lose? Many things. Self-respect, for one. Or is that outmoded in your book? You think I'm a hard case, don't you? No, I don't. I, underneath your go, 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 I think you know the true meaning of love in every sense of the word. But you seem determined to build a brittle shell around yourself. Since we've been living together, I've seen it happening, Debbie. Now, that's silly, Judy. I know what I want, that's all. Okay? You know what you want. I think I'll get a cup of coffee. There's some in the pot. Okay. Oh, by the way, this was in the mailbox when I came in. From your engineer friend down in South America, from the look of it. Yes. Thanks, Judy. Oh, no. You know, if I had a nice young engineer who wrote to me regularly... Debbie, you're crying. It's, it's all right, Funny how a few simple words can change everything. I begin to see myself as I really am. This engineer chap? Judy, I'm going to level with you. There isn't any boyfriend in South America. But I don't understand. The letters. You're from my sister. Your sister? I never knew you had a sister. That's typically me, too. Shame to admit I had a sister a medical missionary. Afraid it might spoil the sparkling image of Debbie Moore, the girl who knows where she's going. Oh, Debbie. You poor, crazy little nut. Betty's been very ill, Judy. She's almost died with tropical fever. Oh, my dear. She tells me she's gloriously happy. Because down in some miserable little Bolivian village, she's been able to help a handful of people out of their filth and squalor. And I'm ashamed to acknowledge she exists. Debbie. Gloriously happy. I don't even know what that means. What kind of a phony creep am I anyway? Honest enough to ask yourself that question. And honest enough to face the answer? Here, Betty's willing to give her life for those people. It makes my brand of giving look pretty sick, doesn't it? That's for you to decide. I don't know. Nothing makes sense anymore. That's not so, Debbie. You've been jolted into taking a look at yourself for once. And that's good sense. Your sister is putting Christianity to work. Maybe that's what makes her so happy. Perhaps God could help make sense out of your life. That must be Reed now. He said seven o'clock. Well, I guess I'm going to have to play this by ear. I'll try to use some common sense. That should be enough. 
Where you go? Time out's getting you home. It has been a wonderful evening, Reed. The play was magnificent. I thought so too. I'm glad we saw it together. Reed, I'm sorry about about the weekend thing. But I think you understand my feelings. I do. And I respect them. Oh, any moron can pretend that virtue and morals don't matter. I'm not sure I want to be a moron. I think you are a very special type person to go on the I'd sooner hear that from you than from anyone else I know. Debbie, what are you going to do about the head buyer's job? I'm not taking it. It's Lily Foss's job. She's earned it. She deserves it. Matt Heron claims I have the know-how. I know the answers. I'm going to have to tell him that I'm only just beginning to learn the real answers. True success is found not so much in what we get out of life, but in what we contribute to it. Greatness is nearly always related to what a person gives to the world. Yet there are many who feel, as Debbie did, that personal achievement, status, and power are the only measurements of success. They are willing to give everything they have for this, often sacrificing something of truly great value for an unworthy end. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, makes this point. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Thousands of so-called success stories have ended in tragedy. Having reached the hard-won pinnacle, it turns out to be an empty, lonely, and precarious position. May I urge you to examine your goals. What does your life mean to the world, even to that part of the world nearest to you? The living word, the Bible, has much help to offer the honest seeker after a successful life. And Jesus Christ has not just left us his teachings and example to follow, but he is a living presence in the lives of all who seek him in faith. The simplest life offered to Christ will be satisfying, useful, and successful. Join us again, won't you, when we will seek to learn more of the living word and of him who is, in very truth, the living word. about the world's bestseller. This free Bible correspondence course is yours just for the asking. Simply send a letter or postcard to The Living Word, care of this station. Do it today. Do it now.